Hi there, in this new series I'm going to take you through a set of engineering videos I initially created for National Instruments, sorry, NI, as part of a new online training course I helped them create called Implementing a Test Strategy, uh, links below. In this video I'm going to give you an overview of dynamic code analysis and if you want you can play along at home as I've placed all of the demo files that I use on my GitHub page, again links in the description. Right, let's get started with what is dynamic code analysis and how to use it. So what is dynamic code analysis? Well, dynamic code analysis is a tool that we can use to understand how the software works during execution. And that means the software actually has to be running when we're testing it. This is different to static code analysis, which involves analyzing the code when it isn't running. We could use dynamic code analysis to detect memory leaks, areas for performance improvement, we could identify the source of undesired behavior or errors, and we can ensure that the application performs the same on different targets if that's part of our requirements list. The first tool we're going to look at is the Profile Performance and Memory tool. Now this is a great tool to understand which sets of VIs are taking the most amount of time to execute and also which VIs are taking the most memory as well. So let's head over to LabVIEW and see it in action. In LabVIEW I've created a really straightforward demonstration that's going to generate a large amount of data, sum all of the data elements together, as well as sort the array into ascending order. So let's run the VI and see what happens. Let's pick an array size of 25,000 elements and click run. And you can see that this VI is taking quite a long time to execute. But let's find out how long it actually took to execute and which VI was actually causing the delay by going to Tools, Profile, Performance and Memory. Now that's going to open up the Profile Performance and Memory tool. And we can use this tool to find out timing statistics or memory usage. Because we're mostly interested in timing statistics now to find the VI that was taking so long, let's click on timing statistics. And if we click on timing details, you'll see that more columns appeared so we can get even more details about the timing. Let's start the profiling tool. And you can see that all of the VIs that are in memory got populated. And if we run this VI, you see it still takes quite a few seconds to execute. You then stop the profiling tool. It should be no surprise that right at the top of the list with 3.3 seconds is the sort array VI, which is this VI here. Now, you may have guessed that the sort array VI was going to take the most amount of time to execute. However, imagine if you had hundreds of VIs in your project, but your project was running really slow and you couldn't work out why. Using the profile performance and memory tool, you'd very quickly be able to find out which VI is taking the longest amount of time to execute. Now I've actually created a more optimized version of the sort array VI, so I'm going to replace it if we can run the profiler again. So I'm going to select it, click control space, and then search for my new VI. Sort array optimize and control P to swap it. And let's run this VI again after we've started the profiling tool. So let's start the profiling tool and run the VI. And you can immediately see this VI is taking much shorter amount of time to execute. And let's stop the profiling tool. You can see I ran the VI seven times and the average amount of time spent in array manipulation was 22.3 milliseconds and sort array optimize only took 4.5 milliseconds on average to execute. That's a much better than the 3000 milliseconds we saw earlier. With this profiling tool, we can also find out about memory usage. So let's click on profile memory usage and the memory usage tab below to get some more data about it and start the profiler. Again, it's brought in all of the VIs in memory and start running this VI. And let's run the VI a couple of times to work up an average. And then we'll click stop. And we can see something rather surprising here, some array which is this VI here, is taking 
1,600 kilobytes of memory, which is more than the Array Manipulation VI itself. So let's have a look inside Summary and find out what's happening to cause this number to be so large. If we look at the block diagram, you can see we have multiple indicators and each indicator is taking a copy of memory. I thought I would show you this VI because I've certainly been guilty of it in the past where I've been working on an algorithm and I've put an indicator down as a test point to make sure my algorithm was working correctly. However, each of those test points will be an extra copy in memory. So let's delete all of these. Control B to remove that broken wire and save. And try running this profiling tool again, remembering that the average was 1600 earlier. So we'll start this and run this VI a couple of times and stop. And you can see that summary is now 402. So that's great, we've reduced our memory usage by a factor of four. The next tool to talk about is the Desktop Execution Trace Toolkit. This is a standalone application which you can download from the NI website and it will track execution data from LabVIEW applications. Now this tool is really awesome because we can see every single event that's occurring, every memory allocation, every ever that occurs. So this is a really handy debugging tool. And so let's just head into LabVIEW and see it in action. For this demonstration, I've created a really simple application so that when I run it and click on the launch process button, I launch a new asynchronous process. So we have process one, two and three. But occasionally this error message will occur. And when you have lots of asynchronous loops running in your code, debugging can become really difficult to try and find out where the error is occurring. That's where something like the Desktop Execution Trace Toolkit really comes into its own. So once you've downloaded it, you can link it to your LabVIEW application. You can then choose what type of events you want to log using the tool. So here we have a few selected. I've got event structures and user events selected because there's lots of event structures in this application. There aren't any queues or notifiers, so I'm going to deselect that. I don't have any user defined traces, but I do want to know whenever I'm launching a brand new VI. So I'll keep that enabled and I want to know about any errors. So let's start this tool and launch another process. You can see that when I clicked the launch process, I got a trigger event and that was a value change event because I changed the value of that Boolean. And now when a, an error occurs, that error will appear in the desktop execution trace toolkit as a big red line. And it actually tells me exactly where that error occurred, asynchronous process, and then it gave me the ID of that instance. But more than that, I can double click. And this is the block diagram of that cloned instance. And this makes debugging so much easier. And in fact, you can probably see that whenever I press something on the keyboard, an error message appears. But by using this tool, I was able to get to that block diagram. And so now I can refactor the code and then remove that error. In this module, we looked at dynamic code analysis and we looked at two main tools, the profile performance and memory tool of a desktop execution trace toolkit. But we didn't have nearly enough time to go into all of their features and how they can help you with your applications. So I've left some resources in the description below where you'll find links to various knowledge base articles, blog articles, as well as getting started guides. You should also find all of the source code that I used in these demonstrations so you can download it and try out your own dynamic code analysis. I hope you enjoyed that video and if you did please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you again next time.